Hi everyone, welcome to Skill Boost. I'm Kalpit Vival. I'm currently a third year B.Tech student at IIT Bombay and I also in a company called Acad Boost and Skill Boost is also part of that. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the entire career path to become a software engineer or a coder. All right. So I will tell you how uh, we learn at IIT Bombay, how we learn to code and how we learn to become software engineers at IIT Bombay. All right. So don't forget to like this video if you like it and don't forget to press the notification bell icon to get more updates and subscribe to Skill Boost. All right. So we are going to talk about the why, why you should become a coder, why it's a big opportunity, why aiming for software engineering can be a really big boost to your career. Then we're going to talk about the basics, how you can learn the basics of programming. Uh, and then we're going to talk about algorithms, which is one of the bread and butter of your entire software engineering field. Then we'll talk about development and then we are going to talk about special fields, especially ML. All right. So this is not going to be a very detailed video because each of these topics are themselves of maybe 30 hours or one hour of content. So I'll be making separate videos uh, for them, but I'll give you a brief roadmap on how you should proceed. All right. We are currently trying to bring daily videos. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all of these things. All right. So why? First of all, let me tell you that a lot of people are under the impression that software engineering is going to decline because of the rise of AI. But I think, yeah, that will definitely happen over time because once we will have AI which can write code, which is already happening by the way, we will not need engineers, software engineers as much as we need right now. But that is not going to happen for probably a decade. That will not be a mainstream thing, at least for the next five to 10 years. All right. And even those things need some programmers to maintain, right? So we can say that software engineering is a very safe, uh, field of engineering, all right, uh, especially in these times when automation is destroying a lot of jobs in, for example, a lot of mechanical engineering jobs are being destroyed because of uh, the rise of uh, automation and robots, right? But this is going to be the safest out of all of them, all right? Plus, we get a really, really good salary if we become a good software engineer and we can also start our own businesses. There are a lot of SaaS businesses, software as a service businesses out there which are making really good money, for example. Um, and, and you can even see at so many companies like Facebook and Google and these these have software engineering at their core, right? These were developed at some piece of software. Facebook was a website, Google was an algorithm and stuff like that, all right? And you can earn a very good salary in India as well as US. You can earn anywhere between 70,000 to uh, maybe 200K USD as a fresher in US. And in India, you can earn anywhere between 10 lakhs to maybe even 40 lakhs per annum if you are a good enough coder. So we know that it's a really stable career. All right, we know it pays really well. So that's the why part. Let's come to how to become a software engineer. All right, so first of all, we have to master some basics. All right, and this is the roadmap which is followed by, uh, uh, by uh, so I currently study in IIT Bombay and mostly we are taught using this pattern or most of the students follow this kind of a pattern. All right, so first of all, you're supposed to get good at some programming languages, all right? So you can do this in your first year if you're in college or you can do it uh, even in your summers or whenever you get time. So the first step is to become really, really good at one or two programming languages. And I recommend them to be C++ and Python. All right. Why I recommend them to be this way? Because Python is one language which is going to be used a lot, in, especially in ML. And C++ is a very, you know, it's... I don't know if that's the right term to say, but I call it a traditional language, which will teach you a lot of constructs, which Python will probably not. All right. So you should try your hands on that. All right. And plus C++ is a bit faster and a lot of people who are into computer programming and stuff, they prefer C++ over Python. So that's why I think learning C++ is a good option. All right. Python can be optional here, but C++ is a must. All right. That's how we study in IIT Bombay at least. So uh, you should become really good at coding. All right. By coding, I mean that if you are given an algorithm, you should become really good at coding it, all right? You can think of anything and you should be able to really type it and make some meaningful code and errorless code out of it in as le less amount of time as possible, all right? So you should really become good at that. You should know all the main constructs by heart and uh, you know, you should basically be a co coding ninja. And one of the best ways of doing that is by doing competitive programming, all right? So I'll make a separate video on competitive programming. It's a very big detail. It's a very big video in itself, all right? So computer programming will, so you can try out the basics of basic problems of computer programming which do not involve data structures and algorithms. They will be usually some very simple, uh, very simple math puzzles or stuff, all right, which you can think the logic of and you are just supposed to code it up. This will make you really fast at coding, all right. So this is step number one. 
Now comes data structures and algorithms. So this step is basically performed in year one at IIT Bombay first year. Now in second year, we are mostly focused on problem solving and developing very deep critical and analytical skills, all right? So we have courses like uh, discrete structures, data structures and algorithms, which really help us to delve deep into the problem solving basics, all right? So your DSA is supposed to be the bread and butter of computer science, all right? So one, so some of the ways to learn it is through the MIT open courseware, uh, course which is available on YouTube all right but then again I think it's a bit uh, you know not so hands-on in terms of its approach uh, like you will find videos but finding assignments and all is can be a big deal so what I recommend to you is that you can probably take up some online courses there are a lot of courses online available online we will soon be launching our own courses you can take them up all right uh, then there's this book called CLRS, which is probably a bit too much, but if you're studying in college and if you've got the time, you should really read it. It will make you really, really good at algorithms, especially if you are aiming to do an MS or something in algorithms, all right? It's a really, really good book. So, uh, so you should become good at some of the basic stuff and data structure like binary trees and heaps and graphs and all that stuff and algorithms also for, for them sorting algorithms and depth for search, breadth for search and so, like these basics algorithms which are usually uh, no and the importance of this is that a lot of coding interviews are held using the knowledge of these first two steps they don't ask you this that much they ask you basic competitive programming type questions a lot all right so i will make a complete new video on uh, placement preparations as well don't worry about that but here your basic your, you are going to prepare mainly through your uh, online courses and the CLSL, clrs book if you have that and I think one really good exercise which helped me a lot is to try to code a lot of these algorithms and try to attempt a lot of competitive programming problems which involve the use of these algorithms and trying to code them up and trying to have them run. So a lot of people don't try to get all the test cases accepted, all right? So you, it might take a bit of time initially, one hour, two hours, but try to get all the test cases accepted in your uh, competitive programming because it really helps you build your concepts and it really helps you understand the data structures and algorithms and what mistakes you might, you might make in implementing them all right because it's very easy to say stuff like oh i know how to reverse a linkedin this is a joke by the way on paper but when doing it on laptop you might struggle right when coding it up for real all right and a lot of these problems happen in uh, some slightly complicated data structures like graphs and uh, you know, there are different types of trees also, red and black trees and all that. And when you implement them, it can lead to issues at times, all right? Now comes development, all right? So what you did till now was mostly for interview preparation and your concept and logic building. You have not really started with actual software development. So now there are many types of development. So two of the most obvious ones are Android and web development, all right? So for Android development, you can use Android. So it depends mostly, it, it is mostly done in Java or Kotlin. All right, a lot of people are doing it in Kotlin these days, but traditionally Java is the preferred language for that. And I will make a separate video on app development as well. All right, and the second is web development, which can again be done in many ways. There are some people which use, so there is front end which involves your HTML, CSS, and there's back end uh, which involves your PHP or whatever you're using, Django, etc. So and then again, development is a completely different and a completely new think like it, it's it's a very huge topic in itself i will talk about that but that is what you should be doing after that okay try to design some websites try to make some apps try to make some python tools for your computer to maybe uh, data mine some data and stuff like that all right so these are mostly dependent on uh, knowing the syntax of how those uh, platforms or how your uh, frameworks operate all right you'll be using some kinds of frameworks like bootstrap laravel or whatever and you you should know how those frameworks work all right so you um, and honestly, it's a lot of stack overflow stuff and Googling and all that. But take, I will make a video on that again. So this is your next step for this. Now, so till now you're equipped with your basics of one language, you know data such as algorithms well, and you know some software development, maybe web development, maybe app development and stuff like that. And at this point, you should try to do a lot of backend coding as well. All right, maybe take up a few internships or something involving backend coding, because that's a very integral part of your uh, development career. All right. Uh, and then you should try to specialize in skills in your fourth year. So this was basically second, first year, second year, third year, fourth year. So in your fourth year, you can try to gain specialized skills like machine learning and or cryptography or anything or, or maybe advanced algorithms, maybe computer vision, computer graphics, whatever, whatever, whatever excites you. All right. So you can try some of that stuff. All right. Because uh, these fields can be really so 
as you increase your skill level your pay and your stature also in the company also increases so for example if you are just an android developer then or let's say you're just a front front end developer then your pay and your uh, task is not going to be that exciting for most people and if you are let's say uh, a full stack developer okay who knows how to do backend then you'll probably get paid more and now if you also know ml and you can get an ml role because some people especially in iits and the higher end colleges they can get an ml role just after graduating as well uh, not it's not very common like uh, usually companies like facebook and google they try to prefer phd students or master students with a thesis for ml roles all right especially when they're seniors but definitely a good grasp in ml can really help you get some jobs in analytics or data science and whatever so in this you can try exploring a bit of ml now ml it itself is a very huge topic but then there's this very classic course by andrew ng which you can take all right i will and we are going to make courses on all of these real soon so we will notify whenever we make them so don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it all right so again i will tell you uh, what the sequence was first of all why you should become a programmer or a coder it is so because you are because a lot it's a very exciting field the job satisfaction in software engineering is pretty high it's really good it's really well paying as well plus you can work from home a lot of companies allow work from home especially after the covid 19 outbreak and uh, of course it's fun i mean like designing your own stuff and building your own stuff can be really fun all right basics first of all you should become really good at one or two programming languages preferably c++ and if you want to uh, explore other languages then probably go for python all right then you should try to become really good at problem solving, try to do a lot of competitive programming, try to learn data structures and algorithms really well, understand data structures, how they operate, try to implement them and solve competitive programming problems involving them. Then go for some development, all right, try out web development, try out app development, try to try different hybrid and native platforms and like try to do as many stuffs and as possible and figure out what really interests you and try to specialize in one or two of these technologies because you don't want to be a jack of all trades, right? and then uh, in the final year or or like it doesn't necessarily apply to college students you can do it in any sequence once you know you have necessary or you have sufficient knowledge and in the final year or whenever you have done all this you can try exploring a bit of machine learning all right you can try ai machine learning there are there are a lot of things you can try out in that you can try out face recognition technologies computer vision and all that stuff all right but one very important thing that please go in this sequence i know a lot of people who start from here just because of the hype they don't understand python they don't understand anything then they start from machine learning it doesn't work that way you should really go in this sequence because that's how most colleges follow because there is a structure there's a structure of learning all these things all right you cannot violate that right otherwise you will fail miserably at understanding any of them so i really hope you like this video if you like this video do consider liking this video and pressing the notification bell icon because otherwise the youtube algorithm might not show you our video if you don't like it or don't subscribe to notifications and we will be bringing more such things we will be bringing out courses for all of these things as well with very high quality real soon so thanks a lot for watching this video by skill boost